Welcome to Checkmate. This is part four. Standing on paper route business. Makita's cookies. Makita's homemade cookies. Well, turns out that it seems that the Makita's cookie family, the, you know, the, 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 the people that owned that place were connected with CMG in some way. And it seems really, really weird. You know, like as soon as Dolph comes in town early in the morning, 10 o'clock, you just want to go grab some cookies. I mean, I know in the morning I'd be having the munchies and, you know, might have burnt one first thing in the morning. But you don't typically go grab cookies. You may grab a biscuit. You might, you know, get something like that in the morning. So I'm under the impression that bro might have been going by the store to take care of some street business. You know, they say Dolph put a lot of money in in, in the hood, you know what I'm saying, in, in, in Memphis, Castellia. And uh, maybe he was going over there to make a drop, pick up something, who knows, right? But the thing is, when he got inside that cookie shop, something was in there waiting for him. I'm not real sure that you know, the attack came from the outside. Because if you look at the photos of when he was attacked and that glass, that front glass, his arms were hang- his arm was hanging out of the glass. So if you're gonna get hit with a high caliber weapon, of course the blowback is gonna push you back the opposite direction of the gunfire. But from the looks of that picture, he fell frontwards into the glass, into the gunfire. That doesn't make sense. For him to fall out of that glass, someone would have had to be, sh- someone would have had to take those shots from inside of the cookie shop. And knowing bro, he won't even expecting it from inside because yo, we got business. We got business. And the thing is, what if, what if, you know, what if the people from the cookie shop, I mean, cause yo, your man's look real grimy. The, the, the owner's husband and then the daughter, the two daughters, they were running, they were street chicks. So they know what's going on in the street. What if Dolph, you know, gave them some money and just went back to go get what he's owed and they ain't have it. So they set the man up. I don't know. Allegedly, I don't know. I'm just, I'm just spec, I'm just speculating. But from the looks of it, that brother was shot from the inside. And then, if you look at the photos of the gunmen, it looked as if they were aiming down. Hmm. Look at the top windows on the store. None of the top, none, none of the upper windows are affected. The only window that are, that is affected is the bottom window pane where Dolph was laying out of. When you look at the photos of the two young men running in with the assault, with the, with the guns, you see that they're pointing down. They're aiming down. Dolph is a tall brother. I mean, you, why would they be aiming down? Why would his arm be sticking out of the window? Well, okay, so thing is, after Dolph was taken out like that, you know, look, it's, they're aiming down. They're aiming down. But yeah, after Dolph was taken out like that, it turns out that Big Jook, you know, Big Jook had this, this, this smoke dispensary, the smoke shop, and he was doing a 420 smoke event, smoke, you know, smoke event down in Memphis. Makita's cookie, the sister, you know, they were they were involved. They were involved, you know, in in the you know with the event with Big Jook, and no doubt CMG. That being said, there's a connection, and the thing is, Memphis is a small, small ever. You know, it's a small small city, so everybody knows everybody. Everybody knows what's going on with everybody. 
You know what I'm saying? Um, you know, I listened to a, 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 a interview from another brother from Memphis and, and to hear him say it is like a belt line that circles around Memphis. You could hit north, south, east, west on this same stretch of highway. So everybody's basically connected. So to, to, to wonder if the people from Makita's butter cookies um, would know Big Jug, Yo Gotti, you know, and all of those those guys, it's a no brainer. Of course they know each other. Of course they know each other. Don't you know a couple of brothers in your hood that, that you don't necessarily rock with, but I mean, they're in the same city, so you pretty much know them. You know what's going on with them. You've heard. So, so you know, to, to hear that they may have had some sort of connection with CMG, it wouldn't surprise me at all. It wouldn't surprise me at all. But it's a lot more to this Dolph CMG PRE situation than, than we could cover in one episode. There's a lot of layers to this. There's a lot of layers. On our next episode, we're going to speak on the Gucci Mane, Yo Gotti beef, which had a little stuff to, you know, a little bit to tie into this as well. But back to this Makita's uh, homemade butter cookie store. So when he was shot, laid there out the front of the, the window with his arm sticking out of the window, right? And, and you see the, the photos of the young men aiming down, shooting. It leads me to believe that he was already shot, hit the ground. They come through to hit and make it seem as if that's where all of the assault came from outside. And then they turn around, head back to the car, pull out. To my understanding from the insurance agent, uh, from 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 Black Youngsters insurance agent, they hopped into his his lady's car, his his girl, baby mama, whatever. They hopped into her car, that the car that's in Black Youngsters name, that white Mercedes with the dent behind the passenger door. And they pulled out. Now, when they pulled out. Allegedly, there's a guy who was with Dolph. This guy, this slim dude with dread, they say he always was with Dolph. If, if he's always with Dolph, anyways, they say the guy was with Dolph, start firing off on the car. Just start firing off on the car. Now, you gotta, and, and from the photos, it looks like he was firing like a, a Draco or something like that. Now, if you hitting like that, pop, 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 if you hitting like that and you ain't hitting nobody, it's only two guys in that one little two-seater coupe and you ain't hitting nobody, it makes me wonder what the hell's going on. And then how are you firing after they attacked off? Where the hell were you at when they were coming? It just makes me wonder. Was that the gentleman on the inside? Who was that on the inside who fired off? Did he fire off and came and made it look like something? It just makes me wonder. Where are the cameras from inside the cookie shop? Were they keep, were they conveniently not working? Is that what's going on? So So those are the questions that I have. From, from what I've gathered, it seems as if the narrative that's being pushed, it, it ain't quite it. Yeah, they did come and shoot him up. Yes, they certainly did, but there's more to it. How does things start off? Who the hell was he going there to meet? How the hell they know he was there? How do you know he didn't got that much time to be rep, to be ready like that? You're not just riding around ready like that. You don't just ride around masked up with machine guns at your leisure just like that. I could see if you had to hopped out, popped out, the, you know, j jumped out, popped out the trunk, pop, 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 like that. But nah, they hopped out and bop, bop and got out of there. They were prepared. They were prepared. How Dolph riding around comfortable? You know why? Because he always stops there. He, he has to be comfortable there. They got business. That's what I, that's what I gather. I gather. 
But it's something behind that Makita's cookie shop. It's something going on there. It's a lot of questions that were not answered. So it turns out now they closed down the cookie shop, moved to another location. You can still pour these cookies from offline, though. I looked online. You could order them offline. Because, I, you know, I'm with supporting the black business. But I ain't with supporting bullshit. And if they had something to do with Flipper's death, yo, I'm not with supporting that. There, there needs to be more answers. Yeah, we got the we got the, the top of, we got the top few layers of the story, but who else is involved? Who are the movers? Who are the shakers? We see who called the shots. Now, who else? Who took the orders and who made the moves to put it in play? Now, there's been a lot of murders behind this, so I'm sure the PRE guys were tapped in to to kind of know who the you know who some of the players are you know i would like to have some answers so i can give my audience some answers but all in all man it was just you know just a messed up thing man you got somebody who's bringing stuff back to the hood positivity back to the hood putting brothers on helping brothers build their own brands and putting them out there we need more of that in the hood man we can't let nobody take that away we gotta protect that we gotta protect brothers like that we gotta protect people who bring things back to the hood positive I know that in Memphis it's easier said than done so you have to try to stay positive amidst a lot of negativity that being said we got a full blown war on our hands in Memphis Dolph had a lot of people that loved him and still do and they willing to ride for him without the bag. Just on GP. Seems as if they putting the pressure on CMG right now. Um, and we're just gonna keep our eyes on the streets and our ears to the streets and keep you updated with what's going on next. Stay tuned. I'll see you in part five.